Today we're celebrating the Songkran. It's the Thai New Year. Actually, it's an Indian New Year that the Thais borrowed. The Thais are wise. They start the New Year four times in the year. January 1st, Chinese New Year, the traditional Thai New Year, which was during the last new moon, and now Songkran, which is the Indian New Year. Gives you a chance to get the New Year started right. If you miss it the first time around, you can start again on the second, the third. This is the fourth time. This is the last chance to get it right. Each New Year is an opportunity to look back on the past year, see what life was like, see what we did. That's the important thing is what we did. Where we did it right, we did it right, we make sure that we want to continue in that way. If we made mistakes, we want to see what we can do to correct those mistakes. Because that's where our real enemy lies, is in our lapses of mindfulness and our lapses of discernment. Several people have noted that the Buddha image that we have this year that we're going to be blessing is called the destruction to enemies image, and people are wondering what enemies we had in mind. But the real enemies are inside. The enemies outside are nothing compared to the ones inside. The ones outside can harm your body, they can harm your material possessions. But it's the internal enemies that can harm your mind. And the harm that's done to the mind, the heart, that can last for a long time. So you want to make sure that you destroy those enemies. And you start out by looking at your behavior. You want to make sure that these enemies don't, at the very least, if they're there inside, they don't go out and they bother the neighbors. They don't go running around causing trouble. The Buddha said there are four ways in which we learn how to live together peacefully, in a way that's conducive to happiness for everybody all around. And as we do, we get in training and getting some control over our internal enemies. The four qualities are these. It starts out with giving, and then there are kind words, genuine help, and appropriate treatment of other people, consistent and appropriate treatment of other people. Giving, of course, starts with giving of material things. Because when you give a gift, it, it, it erases a barrier. It's when we have a price on things that we create a barrier between ourselves. But when you give a gift, that erases that barrier. And you realize that your, your own mind becomes a broader mind, a more spacious mind as a result. And of course, the people around you are happy to receive gifts from you. And this can be a gift of material things, but also can be a gift of your time, gift of your energy, gift of your knowledge, a gift of your forgiveness. When you can give in these ways, life together becomes a much more conducive, a much happier life. Second, kind words. In other words, even when you have critical things to say, you learn how to say them in a kind way. You look at the person's situation, try to find a way that shows at the very least you have some respect for the person. You don't despise the person. One of the worst things for human relationships is contempt. And contempt is so easy, especially now with the social media. You can say something nasty and push a button and not think about it. But that reverberates around in the, in the online universe. And it just creates more and more divisiveness. So to avoid contempt, you want to make sure that if you're going to say something critical, you look in a way, do it in a way that shows that you still have respect for that person. After all, you feel it's worthwhile to help that person correct his or her ways. As Buddha said, when we can correct our, our own ways, that's how we gain knowledge in the Dharma, to committing ourselves to trying to do things rightly and then reflecting on it. And if in their reflection they don't see something, but you see it, you, it, it is your opportunity as a gift. Now make sure that it is meant as a gift and not just as a put down. That way you can really be helpful. And that, that kind of criticism can actually help make things better, help make society a more sociable place to live. As for genuine help, 
you don't think you don't do things just to do it for show. You try to think about what does this person really need. What would this person really appreciate receiving help? In? And sometimes you want to do it in ways that that person might not expect. To show that you really are giving some thought. And that kind of help really goes to the heart. If it's just help for show, then it washes off very quickly. But when you really help somebody that, with their genuine needs, okay, it goes deep into the heart and stays there like a dye that moves into the into cloth and just stays in the cloth. And then there's finally appropriate and consistent treatment of other people. You treat people appropriately according to their station. You treat the parents and the way the parents should be treated. You treat your children the way your children should be treated. In other words, you're fair in your treatment of other people, and you're consistent. The things that you say to someone's face are the same things you say behind that person's back. You don't gossip about them. And this way, the words that you said behind their back finally get to their ears. They're, they don't harm people's ears when they do when they hear that. So if you act in these ways, being generous and being kind in your words, giving, giving genuine help, and also treating people appropriately, okay, this is what creates un unity in a group, harmony in a group. It also works on your own defilements. As the Buddha said, when you help other people, you're helping yourself. And he pointed out four qualities that you develop. First, of course, is goodwill. You show that you really do wish for other people to be happy. And you realize you have, you have to make that a permanent part of your mind. Goodwill is something that we normally feel for some people, but not for other people. That's human goodwill. But the Buddha is saying you should lift your goodwill to be the level of a Brahma's goodwill. In other words, it's universal all around. And when it's all around like that, then you can start to trust yourself in your interactions with other people. Because if there are gaps in your goodwill, there's going to be gaps in your skillful actions. So you want to make sure it's all around. You make this a constant practice. The second quality you develop is empathy. You gain a sense of how other people are feeling. And that becomes one of your own virtues then. You get more and more sensitive to their feelings, you get more sensitive to your own feelings. This is going to be an important part of the meditation being really sensitive to what's going on in the mind, not just brushing off your feelings as being irrelevant. But at the same time, when you're dealing with other people, you have to develop patience and you have to develop equanimity. The Ajahans in Thailand noticed that for, among Westerners, these were the two weak points. We're very impatient and we don't have much equanimity. But if you're going to have peace in the world, there'll have to be a lot of things that you are willing to forgive and you have to be patient with other people about. We have to learn how to see patience not as a weakness, but as a strength. The same with equanimity. Equanimity is the ability, the Buddha said, to make your mind like earth. Disgusting things happen, pleasant things happen, but the earth is not disgusted by the disgusting things or pleased by the pleasing things. It knows them. At least your mind, like earth, knows them. The contact is made, but there's no reaction. Now, this doesn't mean that you never react at all, but you want to make sure that your first response to something is not just to give in to your emotions, but you look at the situation for what it really is, and then you organize a response. In other words, you're responsive rather than reactive. This is what makes us human. We can organize through our responses. Material things react. You hit a billiard ball and it goes in a certain direction. That's its reaction. But with a response, you can organize your response as to what you think is the wisest and most useful way to respond to the situation. And that requires that you look at the situation first to see what's really going on. So equanimity is an important part of being proactive in a skillful way. We all too often think of equanimity as indifference, not caring about anything. But the Buddhist type of equanimity is equanimity when you want to do something well, and you keep on wanting to do it well. So you have to have that observer in mind that can admit mistakes when mistakes have been made. You can see what's right and admit that it's right, and then make whatever adjustments need to be made. 
As for patience, again, the Buddha says, make your mind like earth. Combine this with your goodwill. So that even though other people may mistreat you, that you don't let that affect your goodwill. The image the Buddha gives is of someone kind of trying to dig in the earth and spit on the earth and urinate on the earth and saying, be without earth, be without earth. And he says, as you said, that person is never going to succeed because the earth is so much faster than that person's efforts could ever be. So in the same way, you want to make your, your patience vast, your goodwill vast. Because otherwise, if your goodwill depends on other people's behavior, it's not dependable at all. And so see it as a strength. It's not a weakness when you're patient. You can put up with a lot of things. That means that you can outlast your enemies. Because that's the important part of all this. As you develop these qualities inside, then you can start dealing with your enemies inside as well. If you have goodwill for your genuine happiness, you begin to realize that greed, aversion, and delusion are not your friends. As the Buddha said, we go around with craving as our companion. But it's misled us so many times. It's about time that we begin to realize we have a false friend. Learn to look at your goodwill, look at your equanimity, your patience, your empathy. These are your real friends inside. And your greed, that's not much of a friend. Your anger is certainly not a friend. Look at all the destruction that anger can do. The reason we don't see this, of course, is because of our delusion, so we have to work on our delusion as well. These are the real enemies inside. You know, make up your mind, okay, we're going to weaken these enemies as much as you can in the course of the year. As for enemies outside, they're going to do their thing. But that's their karma. Your karma is what you do, say, and think. And anything inside that would make you do, say, or think something that would cause suffering, that's not a friend, that's a traitor. And as long as you realize this, then you've got yourself on the right side. And you can make up your mind as you go through the year. This is the year that you're finally going to take a stand against these false friends. Learn to cultivate your good friends. The ones that are unassuming. Patience is a very unassuming friend, but it's really reliable when you have it on your side. So remember that the things that people outside do to you, they can, at worst, they can kill you. The things that you do to yourself inside can go beyond your own death. So you want to make sure that you side with your genuine friends inside. And do your best to overcome the enemies inside. And that's a year well spent. However much you're able to do that is, is a well spent year. You may say, well, how can I get rid of all my greed, aversion, and delusion? Well, do your best. Just because the job is large doesn't mean you can't tackle it. Learn how to make it a smaller job. Focus on each moment of the mind as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Say, I don't know about the future, but I do know I'm not going to let these things take over my mind right now. And five minutes later they come back and say, well, I don't know about the future, but I do, do know about right now, right now. And as you keep control over right now like this, at the very least you can keep them at bay. And that's an accomplishment right there.